the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, it's Wednesday. What day is it today? April 7, that's right. Sophia's birthday yesterday. Tomorrow is Joseph's birthday. So today is hump day, Wednesday. Um, April 7, the gospel comes from St. Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. This is a long gospel narrating the story. We're still continuing the narratives of what happened after the resurrection and our Lord's appearances, okay, after he resurrected. So today, we're going to hear the story of how our Lord appeared before his two of his disciples who were walking home to their town of Emos from Jerusalem, where perhaps they witnessed all of the, well, they didn't witness because hardly was any disciple or apostle at the crucifixion, right? They all fled with the exception of St. John. Um, but of course, everybody heard about what happened in Jerusalem, right? And in fact, that was how the story goes. They were walking back home to Emmaus discouraged, discouraged because of what transpired in Jerusalem, which was what? The crucifixion of our Lord. And uh, they were so discouraged that they just decided to go home. They thought it was all over. Right? And our Lord walked with them on the way, on the road. Our Lord pretended to be like a fellow traveler. So he walked with them and he asked them curiously, what are you guys talking about? And they looked at him and says, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know what happened um, in these past days? Then he said, what things? Oh, about Jesus, you know, he was a prophet, a mighty, you know, uh, he, he, he did plenty of good works, etc., etc., and how our leaders just killed him. We were hoping he was going to be the one to restore the kingdom of Israel. And then what did our Lord say? Oh, foolish of you. <laughs> foolish of you. How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. So our Lord without identifying himself, without making him known to them. And they also didn't recognize him for some reason. Well, he explained to them the whole history of the people of Israel, beginning from the prophets, okay, to Moses and everything else. Everything leading up to the narrative of the crucifixion. By the way, these two were disciples, not apostles. Okay? So what's the distinction? Remember that in the Gospels, we, we hear about our Lord having 72 disciples and 12 apostles. What's the difference between these two groups of people who were following our Lord? Okay? The distinction is such that apostles or an apostle is somebody who is sent on a mission. The word apostle comes from the word sent. Okay. Um, so our Lord chose 12, 12 men who he was going to form and educate and prepare to be sent out into the world on a mission. On a mission to what? To proclaim the good news 
and baptize all nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right? He entrusted his church, the whole salvific mission of the church, to 12 apostles who he sent out to convert the rest of the world. But aside from them, there were also disciples. There were about 72 of them. And the disciples, disciples is, is, is a word that means pupil, student, follower. Okay? So there were 72 who were also in their company who were not necessarily commissioned and, and given that, that uh, task to go out and preach and, and do the same thing the apostles did. But they were there following Jesus, learning from Jesus, okay? And eventually, eventually, hopefully, to help the apostles with their mission. So these two, who were so discouraged about the crucifixion, were going home to Emmaus. Maybe they were among the 72, okay? As they narrate later on, because he said, um, uh, you know, some of our own company, the women in our company. Who are these women? Well, Mary Magdalene, who we read about in yesterday's Mass, right? Yesterday's Gospel. And the other women in their company said that they saw him, or that, they had that he had resurrected. But, you know, we're not really sure about that. Okay? Well, what did our Lord do? Let's continue with the story. It was getting, uh, the day was far spent, it was getting into evening, so, what did they do? They urged him. They urged, these two disciples urged Jesus. Still, they still did not recognize him, right? To them, to them, he was still a stranger walking along with them on the road. What does, what do they say? Stay with us. Maninoviscum. I like saying it in Latin. Maninoviscum. Stay with us. Remain with us for the night. For it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. So Jesus obliged. Okay, I'll stay with you. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. And with that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. It was Jesus after all. But then he vanished from their sight. So what did these two do? <laughs> they realized, oh, that was Jesus. And were not our hearts burning within us when he was explaining the, the, the scriptures to us? See? All of a sudden they started feeling alive again and, and encouraged that, oh, oh boy, they were enlightened and started realizing, that's right, that's true, that had to happen to the Christ. And this guy was just explaining it to us. And that guy happened to be Jesus himself. So what did these two disciples do? They rushed back to Jerusalem in order to announce to the disciples that they too have seen the Lord. So beautiful, beautiful story of many things really uh, uh, one of the things here that we that we i'd like to highlight is that number one let's never get discouraged discouragement despair like these two disciples almost had right they were definitely discouraged is is uh, is a bad thing <laughs> we, we should keep the faith in our lord and in his promises okay these two disciples perhaps lacked faith they lacked faith in Jesus. They believed in him a little bit, but not quite all the way. Their hearts and minds were not quite as convinced, as, as dedicated perhaps to, to God. And so they wavered. See? Their faith wavered. They, 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 their faith was not that strong. You know what? Sometimes we can feel like this when we are unsure of what we're doing in life. Sometimes we can feel like this when we are not sure about whether we are doing the right thing or not. Sometimes we feel like this when we don't recognize Jesus. We don't recognize God 
in the things that happen in our everyday life. We tend to be oblivious that God is there in the events of our lives, in our walking through life. We forget that God is there. We forget because of our lack of faith. And many times when I, when I find myself in that situation of being forgetful of God's presence, in, in the, in, especially in the difficult things that happen in my life, I pray what, the, what uh, another character in the gospel has spoken to our Lord when he said, when our Lord asked him, do you believe? And he said in reply to Jesus, yes, Lord, I do believe. Please help my unbelief. Okay? I do believe, but there's still that part of me that sometimes doubts. And, and, and because of my weakness, I tend to give in to that doubt as to whether you're really helping me or not, as to whether you're really involved in my life or not, as to whether you're really present in my life or not, as to whether all of this happening in my life is part of your will. Help my unbelief. Help me believe in your providence. Help me believe that you are guiding my life. Help me recognize you in the comings and goings of everyday life. Help me recognize you in my siblings, in my neighbors, in other people. Help me recognize you in your hand in the normal, everyday, ordinary things that happen to me in my life. Help me recognize you. And you will see what kind of calm and peace and, and encouragement and, and enthusiasm you're going to feel. Like these two disciples who didn't anymore wait a single minute. They went back to Jerusalem to rekindle their, their dedication to Jesus Christ. To, to make their lives uh, 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 in fire again in love with Jesus Christ. To do the mission that Jesus Christ has entrusted to all of them. To make disciples of all nations. They got fired up the moment they recognized our Lord. Now another, another aspect of recognizing our Lord here is really the, the, the whole idea of recognizing our Lord in the Eucharist. Okay? When did the eyes of these disciples open up? When they recognized what our Lord was doing. Breaking of the bread. Giving it to them. Our Lord must have done that gesture many times. right? He must have had a characteristic way of doing it. right? He must have broken bread. With his apostles and his disciples many times. Until that time when he did it the last time with his apostles. When he instituted the Holy Eucharist. When he said finally to them. Okay, you know this thing that we have been practicing for a while. This breaking of the bread here that I'm giving to you. I really have been doing that because in the final analysis I was going to tell you. That you do this in commemoration of me because this is my body. And this cup is the chalice of my blood. Okay? So from now on, this ritual that we do among ourselves, breaking of the bread. From now on, this ritual which is going to be recognizable. All throughout the centuries until the end of time. Because this is going to be repeated in every mass that you, my apostles, and the, your successors will be performing every day. This gesture will now mean differently. It will now mean that you are partaking of my sacred body and blood. That now this is me. It's not just bread. This is me. So what our Lord did to his two disciples. Was in itself. The Eucharistic celebration. 
And together, not only just recognizing the gestures, not only recognizing what he was doing, but part of that recognition and the very reason why they recognized him, not only physically, but spiritually, was because that breaking of the bread now conferred grace upon them. See? Because prior to that, there was no grace. It was just bread. But when our Lord performed that Eucharistic meal right before these two disciples, he was now giving them not only bread, but himself, the Eucharist. And together with that, the grace to enlighten their hearts and minds and recognize this is Jesus. Okay? So grace that comes as part of the sacrament, okay? as part of the sacrament of the Eucharist, is the kind of nourishment that enlightens our minds, that makes us understand the truths behind the things we believe in, the truth behind our daily comings and goings, and will give significance and meaning to everything that we do. Okay? It is the grace in the sacraments. So this should, this should make us examine ourselves and ask ourselves, do I really recognize Jesus in the Holy Eucharist? Okay? Jesus is in that Eucharist. Jesus is he who is in that that hides behind hides behind the appearance of bread and wine that is truly Jesus with his body blood soul and divinity disguised in the species of bread and wine if we recognize Jesus as he is in the Eucharist, in the Holy Eucharist, then we will recognize him present in all the affairs of our everyday life. He will be present with us as we walk through the roads of life in this journey that we are embarking on. Okay? So let us learn to recognize Jesus. Let us learn to have faith in the Holy Eucharist, at Mass, at church when we are present in front of the tabernacle where our Lord resides. Because if we recognize Him there and we believe in Him there, then we will recognize Him in others. We will rec you will recognize Him in your siblings. You will recognize Him in other people. You will start dealing with other people like they are other Christs. And you're not going to be discriminating against them. You're not going to be treating them badly. You're going to be treating them with charity, with love. Because you will recognize Jesus in everyone. And you will recognize Jesus' hand in everything you do every day of your lives. And you're going to recognize Jesus being part of directing your life to a future that, of course, now you don't understand. But everything works out for the good for those who recognize Jesus. For those who love God, everything will work out for the good. Okay? So let us be like these two disciples who began to recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread and in their conversations and in their journey through life. Okay. That's it for us. EMO. What's that? Oh. <laughs> what is this? Hey, Ava Grace. Look at that. Uh-oh. Okay. Well, that's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. We'll go to attend Mass now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Joseph is saying goodbye. Ava <laughs> hey, Grace, you don't want to say goodbye? Huh? Oh, she's busy playing. Ah, shall we say goodbye?
Come here. You want to say, what is that? What have you got there? You want to show? Baby. What is that? What is that? Care Bear Babies. Oh, I see. Okay. You want to say goodbye to everybody? Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay.